It, they're playing a style that feels like... I don't know. They're ready for the pressure, I think. They're playing a fast-ish lineup. It doesn't feel like they're going to be defaulting into the late game, which I think... I mean, you, you would know more about this than I would, but like, True. I feel like in the pressure of the playoff match, I would default to late game, right? Isn't it more natural to let the enemy make the mistakes and just say, guys, we have the better late game no matter what? It does generally happen over high pressure lands. The later the lands goes, the longer the games get on average, the more teams default to big team fight and scale because it's harder to mess that up. That's just the honest truth. These lane dominant lineups that rely on snowballing they're very easy to go wrong especially when you're not executing at 100 percent like you normally would in an online environment i think that tends to be the biggest difference here so yeah i would not be surprised to see more of these heavy team fight lineups come out as the tournament progresses particularly for these teams like talon or some of the european teams that are not afraid to go late as some of that lane skill falls off a little We'll see where that bounce lies. For Talon, this is probably one of the faster drafts we've seen from them. However, what's interesting is it does end up putting jabs on the last pick with mm. kind of their true carry, right? Okay, yeah, you have Lifestealer and Snap who are going to provide a lot of scale and a lot of damage, but it's this Beastmaster who ultimately is going to have to deal with the Phantom Lancer in the fights and kind of provide the extra oomph of damage to get you into those late-game scenarios and feel content. And that is a situation that I feel like Jabs likes being in. Now, maybe the team doesn't like him being there, but <laughs> he himself loves putting himself in a position where he has to carry the game with last pick. Well, this is a game where he is going to want to build Aghanim Scepter so he can be greedy. He's not only in part, uh, like a big part of the wing condition, as you said, it's the counter to the uh, Phantom Lancer, but the counter to the Phantom Lancer is not building aura items. It's building to scale up and build that Aghanim Scepter and go from there. So. Uh, yeah, I think there's multiple ways that Talon have got themselves into a decent position. I, I feel relatively confident about them in this game one uh, because I went into this series not feeling co very confident about their chances against Quest. Again, they've struggled against the Western European teams, and I thought just based off of play, Quest was a step ahead of Talon. But we'll have to see how that plays out in the game one of this match. So, alrighty, able to get the first blood. Omar, looks like they managed to catch Ollie somehow out of position, probably trying to interfere with the pull and such. Just a nice level two timing abuse. They have Impale plus the Vacuum finishes him off. Ollie not able to get much done with this level one heal as well. That is a rough kill to give away because when you go this nature's attendance to trade with the Lion, this is a matchup you should be winning very hard in the early phases of the game with the Enchantress. This was a pick designed to win that Dark Seer lane as well with some of the purge capabilities off Enchant. It's going to be a little bit of a setback. Oh, for Makoto Talon. barely got that cookie stun into the uh, nicely placed deny in the water rune. Noob tries to position himself to go for the other, but no. And this might be where a lot of the series comes down to Makoto versus Noob. I think Makoto really struggled yesterday in that series versus Liquid. He just couldn't get the ball rolling quite literally. And then you put him in a matchup here. I think Noob is probably a bit less pressure on the lane for Makoto, uh -huh. but maybe more pressure in some of the earlier game rotations, because I think Noob tends to move a lot more than Nisha in the very, very early game. Yes. I mean, obviously these things vary, but on an average, I think that's true. However, I think Makoto should probably have a better lane face versus Noob than he did versus Nisha, where he just got immediately abused before the lane even started in some of those games. And it really set Talon back, because Makoto is their biggest playmaker. Yes. Like, especially when you put jabs on this last pick, that's gonna build the scale, build the carry. You know he's gonna be hitting a lot of neutral creeps here. 23 Savage also likes to hit a lot of neutral creeps. Where does the playmaking come down to? I always go back to it's gotta be Q and Makoto. And if Q is not on one of these melee heroes that can start fights reliably, I mean, Batrider is maybe a good substitute for that. So that's also an encouraging factor for Talon here. It comes down to Makoto. I like and what you're saying about the uh, mid-player really matchup important. just because it also, like, it's reflected in the hero matchup as well, right? We've seen this Primal Beast get super aggressive, uh, a lot of early rotation, sometimes pre-level six. You saw it from nothing to say. He's oftentimes leading PSG LGD around by that Primal Beast. And you've got a snap buyer who's typically pretty good at being able to win against those melee heroes. So both the player and the hero combination says Makoto should walk away with a landing phase win, but Noob is going to make faster rotation rotations around the map. And Makoto is walking away with that win. He is almost doubling up the CS here on Noob, and he got a D ward on top of extra water runes here. So he is living the life. And this is exactly what Talon want. Even if the side lanes are going a little worse for them, I don't think they care too much as long as Makoto has a good game. Because he's just going to carry him into the mid game. This guy is really damn good at playing from ahead. Do not want to give him a start like this. 
A little vacuum action just to send a message to 23 here. I don't know what the message was, but it got sent. Message is he's going to get those range creeps. Can't stop him. Ooh, Noob is going to get blasted down. Makoto. Noob has been playing it, I think, how you're supposed to, which is cutting waves and such. But as soon as he shows up in the middle of the river, that is where Makoto is able to pounce and gets an early kill. And the one versus one. That's so much XP going to Makoto's way. He's already level six at before the five minute mark here. Just ridiculous. If Talon can make another rotation here, kill the beast when he comes back, that's going to feel amazing. But the primal beast is going to yeah, rotate early. Going to TP to a side lane here with level five. This is not the lane to gank though. You I think he's the lifestealer lane. Okay, he wants the stacks. I see. This is pretty greedy. If you're going to TP and gank a side lane, it's got to be this beast master, right? That's the hero you want to shut down here with the rotation, not this top lane for lifesteal. Even if you somehow get the lifestealer kill, I don't think it feels that impactful in the game overall. It leaves some skelly boys to think about where their family went as he's still looking for his own ultimate into Makoto, and this threat is still alive mid with the kisses. It could also be a fast TP to one of the side lanes for Makoto if he can shove the wave in. And these yeah, side lanes going to take a lot of damage here with this combination. Flame yeah, there is back. Potential here. Max is long range. Not quite enough to get the kill, but all he's going to sneak in from behind. Gets the tombstone out, but Kiori's already dead. They're going to go for the tombstone kill too. All he actually really wants that one. And he'll have it, but maybe giving up his life for it. We'll see. The TP's going to come in. TA 2000's a little bit too low to go for that mode. He's turned around. Go for Q. Axe is coming in. TA 2000's a little bit low, and Ollie's heal has now run out. It's going to be a close call between them, but the kisses. Oh, the kisses coming in, and they're going to nail both of them just enough. It's Jabs who claims both, though, with the axes. That was very close to getting turned around for Quest with the Lion Teleport. Makoto in the right place at the right time, putting that ultimate to use. Gets a double kill for Jabs, who gladly cleans up all of that gold. And now they're continuing to press the tower. Kiori just comes back in. Yeah, I mean, he TP'd in here, towards the end of that engagement, which means he's not going to have a TP back out. Talent, early pressure going very well for them. A 2,000 net worth lead and a lot of damage on this tower now. And on the other side, you've got a life stealer who is a hard hero to gank and not a hero that Malak is going to be able to beat in a 1v1 either. This is the downside of picking the Dark Seer early. They banned three carries for a two in the faces void, the Morphling, and the Bloodseeker. And you're still going to get a hero that can stand its ground versus the Dark Seer. That feels really good from a draft perspective for Talon here. And this is the downside of first phase in this hero. You're going to get really powerful spells. You're not going to get a lot of momentum unless you have a very strong lane that you get out of it. I think only like the Spear Breaker comes to mind. And of course, that got banned out as well. So Talon taking advantage of the fact that they have better heroes to rotate to down here on the bottom. Just getting numbers advantage straight up in this early game. Q will... Lane break! And Firefly gets him over the cliff barely. And the Impale misses. Wow. Just a very fortunate series of events there for Q. Keeps him alive. And it continues to shut down Noob here, who has found nothing in the first eight minutes. Zero, one, and zero. Very quiet, muted game for him so far. Down to Makoto's laning and Talon making the first moves. That tower just died bottom. They got like four kills of it and a tier one off a single Enchantress rotation, plus a Snapfire ult. That's just insane value right now. And now you can think about potentially invading more of Quest's map off the next round of Mortimer here, which is up in four seconds for Makoto. Level five already on Ollie as well. Well, this is a nice way to use a double damage rune. You can't kill heroes, just go kill ancient creeps. So we've got a uh, an interesting matchup. I hadn't seen this one too much. Lifestealer versus Primal Beast. Uh, there is a little bit of back and forth there, right? The Life Stealer is very good against tanky heroes, but the uh, Primal Beast does have a BKB Rage Piercing uh, Disable. How do you feel that matchup goes, if you had to guess? Like, do you feel it's more favorable for one or the other? I think it, stats wise, it's probably favorable for Life Stealer. However, I think in competitive games, it's probably a whatever matchup. Yeah. I, I think, if anything, maybe infesting the target that Primal goes on is the real use for Life Stealer in this matchup. Mm, that, yeah, that's actually an interesting. You are totally right, though. The, the pub stats do back up that Life Stealer's a pretty happy boy against Primal Beast. But as you said, 
when it comes to the highest level of play. We'll see whether or not that Pulverize is able to limit the effectiveness of Rage in these team fights. Yeah, I just don't really believe in pub stats 100%, you know? Yeah, yeah, like, even this sure. matchup, we're talking about the, the Beastmaster versus the Phantom Lancer. I get why that pub stat is so skewed, because, yeah, in just an average game, these Drums of Slam are going to prohibit Phantom Lancer from playing the fight. But the heroes function very differently in competitive, especially Phantom Lancer, right? Like, people... The way people play Phantom Lancer in pubs, they just doppel in and charge and hope that they win the fight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That is not what happens as hero competitive. So, I mean, not yeah, the I mean, flame, you get built, everybody like, out the, there, but the I am flaming use everybody build, out there. Right? And just, like, yeah, you can play the outskirts, you can poke with the lances. It's a significant amount of damage. It's something that Beastmaster isn't that good against because right. he can get kited out in Radiant's that scenario. Is under attack. So I believe in that matchup a little bit more. Kiss is coming off the Centaur stop. Going for the kill, onto one the Snapfire, they really need this one of Mars, gonna put him down. Gets the finger off, and that gets the kill, and they can't really turn around on a Primal Beast, they're out of damage, and the Axes failed to get the kill on Kiori. Make a break for the Power Rune. Jams does get it ahead of him, meanwhile Malik is in a bit of trouble, no he's not. He TP's away after a vacuum down the cliff on the Life Stealer. Very smart play. And they're back in again. Uh, this is where the Primal's heating up. Man, those recovery stacks for Noob were huge. It got him so many levels off that DD with the smoke. I was about to rant about how much Ancients give you in this meta, but the <laughs> I guess we're seeing it right now as he is now ahead of Makoto. So much for winning the lane and making a good rotation. Yeah, seriously, they were up 2,000 net worth, and then all of a sudden it's Quest actually leading. I don't know. Ancient camps just give so much if you get away with it. Now, the, the thing is, you, sh in theory, should have been able to punish that if you're Talon. Like, you should be thinking about some of these Ancients or invading the area. I mean, that's theoretical, optimal gameplay, but it's easier said than done. Jabs will have a stack of his own here that he what if, wants uh, to clear through, so that'll also bounce it out a bit here. What if Ancients could see through smoke? What is so you wouldn't be able to do these, uh, like, Tinker and what he did with the Primal Beast there, just like... Killing the Ancients without any sort of fight back? No. Okay. I thought it was a good idea. <laughs> good try. Rotation from Makoto and Ollie. They don't want to let this Primal Beast set the tempo of the game. I mean, he's but been unfortunately, set Soul Star for Noob. He has definitely picked it up. And the gold and levels reflect that. If he gets to a fast BKB here, there's not much to combat him charging in. It's kind of a race to the two offlaner items here. And which team is going to be able to utilize it first? And I feel like this Primal is going to have first say. Like, this BKB should come out before the Ags on Japs, and it should be more straightforward to use for Quest. A simple smoke into a team fight where he gets on top of any of these cores. I don't really know what your counterplay is outside of if you have Aurora or Lasso ready on that spot. 12 minute power rune, they're gonna go for the kill on Kiori, but it's not a fast kill, and the Primal Beast will have his say. Trying to trample all over Ollie, they'll have enough damage for it, Kiori. He might just die with the axes. Raindrop, the kids are gonna start raiding in. Maybe Omar's in trouble as well. One or two, one. a third shot needed. No, the Tick takeout out. burn damage is what kills him. Now, that's a naked brown boots blink lion. I was about to say, damn, he already has a blink. The downside is he doesn't have tranquil boots or anything, so can't run off these spells. He will pay the iron price as tier one's gonna take some damage here. Atoll's done for Makoto, helps him with some setup. Doesn't help him with this type of scenario, though. Slowing him down, Rod of Atos. Does it? Oh, the final swing isn't quite enough, and the wall miss. Q sneaking away with his life Radiant's intact ever so barely. Man, Quest do not want to give up ancient control. They are really protecting their triangle early in this game. And it's given their core's pretty good defensive position on the map. They really want this tier one alive mid as well. Just stall this game out, get to like second, third tier of items for all their core. Oh, he gets a cookie up the high ground. Oh. That's a dangerous play to go for. Yeah, he, I, th I really thought he was going to gun for it. I think he maybe might have wanted to, but he misclicked on the cliff. Still, this is just so much space for the quest cores. You already have the fusal done on the Phantom Lancer on top of the point booster working towards the Zags. That is going to be tough to team fight here for Talon. Even if you have this Drums of Slum, it's not guaranteed you get that interaction against T2000 here. Yeah, they're going to slow down that Drums of Slum. Welcome, Jabs. It's a Blink Dagger Diffusal Blade combo coming your way. There's no TP. Oh, the Infest! No! The <laughs> Decay finished him off. But we'll be able to get the support kill and the Tombstone and chase away these heroes, so TA2000 won't be able to take the time to farm here. No kisses, so unlikely to be able to chase him down. It's an but expensive if they got that Infest, it would have been a big save. Yes, yeah, so that's what 22 is looking for, because you're going to give up top tower during this move. Oh, we got Lasso. They'll get another one. Well. 
At least 23 gets a little more off of this rotation as Malik will probably just punch the tier one to death up here. A very slow and painful one for the tier one. Tier one mid also going to get pushed in by Noob. So Quest making the mo most out of this heavy core rotation bottom by Talon showing all three on one lane. Talon got to get something somewhere and this will be heavy objective damage for a little downside. Another haste rune picked up by Noob as well. He is getting some good primal power runes this game. Somebody killed this lizard, my god. Well, they won't be able to anymore. He's got a BKB. And Malik has a pipe complete because he broke apart his vanguard. No, I meant the ancient Thunderhide lizard that is blocking up one of your ancient cans. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Kill that lizard too, sure. <laughs> Very fast BKB timing for Noob here. He just got ancient priority and it shows. It's a question of what can you do with it? You combine the lion plus this primal with the ion shell surge on him. That's also a nice little combo here, right? Max the move speed out with the trample. Yeah, I think you automatically lose any fights that Primal Beast is a part of. It looks tough. That said, these cores on Talon are pretty tanky, right? Uh, you have Lifestealer with 2000 HP and an Infest. You have Snapfire with the early Atos bots. Probably not going to be the first target gone on, and he's fairly tanky as well. And then that Vanguard Beastmaster closing in on Ags here for jabs. He has it in 100 gold. These are not the easiest cores to just all in with the burst. You pretty much have to commit a finger plus all of the Primal damage plus... If you can get Radiant's the Flesh Golem hit on him, then you're going to be really happy with the single target burst. If yeah. that hero lives off an infest, I think Talon's chances of turning that fight are very high. And an Radiant's interesting itemization here for 23 is he will look for the Radiance, probably to help deal with the Phantom Lancer. I think it does buy you some time in the fight. It's not a direct answer, but every little bit helps. If you add up these tools between the Beastmaster drums, the Crimson that Jabs could get later, plus a Radiance, plus maybe you get a Shiva somewhere in there, that sounds like enough to kind of slow the Phantom Lancer down enough in the fights. Again, you can play off the Lance spam with Ags. That is always the route with this hero. Alan do successfully dodge this uh, power spike that they had reached. Oh, no, I mean, they even got a mech now, but Quest were looking super, super strong. But now Talon have finished some of their items. They've got an Aghanim Scepter complete for jabs. They have the Blink Dagger done for Q. They're ready to strike, especially if they can find the initiation first with the Bat Rider. That is going to be a key factor for a lot of these fights. How much can Q start for his team here? There isn't really a direct response to the Blink Lasso. Oh, successful scan there. Great, great read. TA2000, got to be able to dodge away, might be able to get to it. Just too good. And Axe before he gets ganked. We're looking to start this. Oh, yeah, he spotted it right away. He realizes it's a bit too late. Yeah, you got to respect some of the Boar and Hawk vision on this map right now. Do Quest want to commit for those? Yeah, they, the TA2000 fit pretty deep. They do manage to get the roar on the real one with the kisses following up, but they know the Primal Beast is coming, and he is dangerous. All he's already victim of that one. Pull back in with the vacuum. Jabs, let's see, he's going to fight around this. They have the defense as well. A little bit of extra HP. The drums That's are going out, dang. and he's staying alive. They can't quite burst it through, and he's going to live through this one. Take down Quest. They lose two off of that one, and now they're going to lose TA2000 as well. He can't get away far enough. The Rod of Atos will help hunt him down. A one for three exchange. Four, really, actually, because they killed the lion at the very start. Quest not respecting the amount of HP that they can pump into this Beastmaster with that infest, with some edge heals that stall up a lot of the BKB duration for the primal. I think it's just an overcommittal on Ollie at the start. I mean, I understand wanting to burst down this Enchantress. I think it just costs you too much. And this TP from Lamar is, it's just way too optimistic here. As you got to respect the summons vision coming out from the Beast in the Ench, as well as maybe something else from, you know, you get your trees cut by axes or some kisses come through. Very ambitious. And here, you used a lot on your Primal to go for this Enchantress. Now you don't have enough burst in the tank. That's what I'm talking about. The EHP already from Talon is something you're going to have to worry about. Ooh. They thought they were going to get the burst, but it's Makoto who strikes immediately afterwards. The cookie on two lets the rest of Talon just swarm in, take him out, go for the mid tower next. This is a lot of momentum you're giving Talon's way. That's your Radiance done for Lifestealer. 23 has had a perfect game so far, and all of a sudden, all three cores from Talon pulling out ahead. That BKB timing for the Primal backfired very hard here against Quest as they lose him. I mean, they don't lose him in the first fight, but they basically lose two fights off of this Primal BKB. An audio problem, no. Yeah, they all end on that timing, oh, no. right? They, they invested so many resources for Noob. Did yes. get a successful fight out of it. Now his next team fights, he's going to be probably playing into a pipe. 
on to the Beastmaster, so and again, a lot it's of just, his damage burst is limited. It's just getting baited on this Enchantress. I, it's not an important target to take down. Like, you have zero impetus points. <laughs> I, I don't think the Ench is a threat right now. The, the slow is good in the fights for the shells, the charge, whatever, but you gotta be looking at some big cores and committing heavy for them. Because like you said, all that investment went into the Primal here. If Noob does not pay it back right now, this lineup has a decent chance of just falling flat in the next few minutes. And then you're falling back on the Fatal Lancer scale, which is not guaranteed. Yes. Like, this hero is not the end-all, be-all this game into the Radiance Lifestealer, into some AoE from Snapfire. Even in the Ultra Late, Snapfire actually gives you some decent tools versus the Fatal Lancer with the split shot on the Shredder. Sometimes you just find him in the fight with late-game damage, and he just gets chunked. You yeah, also we have said that, uh, what was it, GPK versus Snapfire yep. versus Phantom Lancer late game. Yes, and Oops. that was not a one-sided affair, right? No. Nope. I also want to point that because you have the vision advantage on Talon with this Beastmaster and some Enchantress summons, you should, in theory, get more reliable jumps in these late-game scenarios with the Fat Rider. You have a chance that you maybe just find Phantom Lancer or find a Primal Beast at the start of the fight, and then where's the damage coming out in this quest lineup? You need a big vacuum combo on an Impale, or you're going to need these Lances to start going to work very fast. Talon definitely have some tools as they're looking to solve some audio tools. They do not have the capability for that yet. I think Talon were confused because what? they were hearing all of their cores getting gold. And that's that's just an uncommon sight. <laughs> I mean, this is uh, this is really important. Not, we talked about the you know the story of Talon and like not really succeeding in upper bracket matches. The only successful run they've had a major has been the very first one where they made a big lower bracket run. Uh, but it's concerning that the later majors Talon has done worse and worse. But they didn't even make it to Bali. Couldn't even make it out of their own regional DPC. So the fact that they show up right here in Rion Masters, manage to get into the upper bracket and start off this game one against a quest that has been cruising through teams. I mean, Quest and BBT look like the very two clear dominant teams of the uh, the group stage. They are the teams to beat right now, I think. Momentum is certainly on their side. Back the talent is taken to them pretty damn well in game one. Is good show of growth perhaps for Talon? Right when they need it most, right? Riyadh Masters, TI, big tournaments. You want to be in your best form right now. It is a very confusing team. I feel like they should have been better for a lot of the year than they were. Yeah. I felt that they have been stronger on paper than some of those recent results have shown, and the potential's been there. So, as you said, maybe fulfilling some prophecy here, putting the region on their back, no easy task. I mean, we saw what it did to NA yesterday. That back got snapped <laughs> by AUI. <laughs> so, so sometimes... AUI so 2000 is pain. I'm sorry, I had to throw Breaking some Breaking backs out here. But... It's not an easy task when there's all this pressure on you. And we know after working in C this year that those fans are ruthless, passionate. <laughs> That's how they're very, very passionate. Very fans. critical. Yes, a lot of fans. There's a lot of CEOs. Jabs is definitely one of them. <laughs> and of course, when you are the CEO, you attract a lot of hate. Mm. There's some CEOs in the world right now attracting a lot of hate. Jabs is up there. And sometimes I think he gets too much hate. Like you gotta, I, I he's a unique player, and I think that yes, if you just did standard things all day long, you could go by unnoticed all the time. But I Jabs think, is unique, and he's, he stands out, and that will draw some... I think we'll underestimate generation. how much of a leader he is, though, in an, a region in C that has historically lacked dominant shot callers and leaders. Yes, like the, this the, guy, skill, the player skill has always been there. Yes. It's just leader he drafts, right? captains, mm -hmm. he's played every role in Dota. Okay, that all of that is going to detract from your gameplay a little bit. I ask you, what captain has done all of that for a team and also been their star player? Gaia's middle tower is under attack. Mm. Exactly. What's the name I could come up with is Seb or No Tail? Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Seb and No Tail both play different roles. Both have had leading roles in teams. Okay, yeah, that was a pretty good example. But I mean, outside of that, <laughs> you know, I mean, two two-time TI winners. That, yeah, that's you know, an unfair comparison jabs. here. All I'm saying is, I, I think Jabs does a lot for this team, both in and out out of the game, in terms of beyond just the individual gameplay. And I think it's a reason that they have succeeded where other C teams have failed because that region desperately needs some of the 
decisive leadership to give you a direction and here it's a pretty good direction all three cores on top for talon they are all scaling in this game and they've been finding a decent amount of farm on their two supports as well which can start to output some damage and give them a team fight setup jabs also went back for that pipe over the crimson guard here so respecting the primal and the dark seer damage more than what the phantom lancer is going to do at least in this portion of the game i can you know, kind of agree with that. that he got that pipe uh, half off because it was used exactly yeah game. he picked it back up out of the trash can <laughs> got thrown in previously so you know a little little efficiency use from jabs there they'll go back for the utility meanwhile quest this is a chance to see a little bit of versatility out of them as i feel like in most of their matches uh just because they seem to be so damn good individually skilled that they just get momentum early on these games and run away with it this is going to be one of the rare times we're going to see quest down uh, at 20 minutes and see how they're able to recover with uh, ta2000 being an integral part of that Star carry player on the Phantom Lancer, who's going to be trying to pick up an Aghanim Scepter, which will, I mean, he has it now. It'll make pushing high ground really annoying for town. That is one concern. Is the high ground that easy for you? Maybe with Aegis, it's a bit easier. You can let 23 Siege. I think the BKB timings are also going to be vital for Talon. This is a pretty early push, honestly, considering they have a lineup that is going for, you know, two BKBs plus the Rage here. I kind of like it, though. If you can bring Quest back, I don't know if this is a push where you're thinking you're going to get a Rax, but if you get everybody back from the from the other side of the map, I think you're happy with that nonetheless. Just got to be careful on these exits, because you will get low during the Siege to the Phantom Lancer spam, and then there's a chance you just get Blink Hexed and all in, and then you're in a weird spot, right? I think Talon have just picked up their all-in items, right? They've got Aegis for two minutes and BKB done. Yeah, they did go for the BKB on the Life Stealer, so things are aligning a bit here with that pipe and double BKB timing. Yeah, if you'd gone an AC, like, Basher type build, or, you know, go back for a Maelstrom or something like that, like, you would have a little bit more longevity against this Phantom Lancer matchup, but this is a peak right here. I just don't know how good this team fight is for, like, this Rack Siege is very slow, and I think if you actually get sucked in the fight i don't know if this is the fight you want it's a very dangerous fight that's how i'll phrase it because there's vac turn around there's a tombstone that might be very deep that during the range quest is pretty Life dealer good. is he going to lose his agents here he's gonna try and get out the creep it's the creep oh, God. Oh, so huge Failing his initiation, all he's trying to go in and help out the life stealer. Now he comes back in a second life, immediately pop the BKB. This is that big this item. This is you not good for Talon. Just run away with it. Yeah, you need this to get that bad. There is still BKBs up for quest. They're gonna use the primal war. Turn around on Doom. Big burst damage. They almost have him, but no, the cookie. It was a little bit shy. He gets off the BKB, and now he charges right on through, back to his base. I guess the stain and the HP for Talon's gonna get him out of this predicament, but that was starting to look sketch, right? Like, you wasted Lasso on a creep. This tombstone's ticking the whole time. That's that high ground fight that could just go horribly wrong. Talon, they don't get the tier three. They get everybody back from quests. A little net worth gained. Not the worst case scenario. And you did end up getting the BKB out of the primal, which you're going to be pretty happy with. Because if you can push that down to the six second mark, then it does limit what Nuke can do at the start of these fights, at least. Let's see where Q messed up here. I mean, I can tell you where he messed up. <laughs> well... <laughs> He's right Just there. Tried he, to go for. He, in his have, defense, that creep was like literally inside the dark seer. Yeah, how did he not get Malik there? That was insane. I'm glad we're actually gonna watch this again because that did look kind of suspicious. Okay, we're not gonna Weird. watch it again, but it did look. <laughs> Well, that it, one actually looked reasonable. Like it did, it did. I, I'm not, I'm not gonna flame Q for that one. That no. looked. Too I thought at first he grabbed the creep that was behind the darkseer, but he actually just grabbed a creep I couldn't even see because it was so in the darkseer. Yeah, weird. Well, it wasn't the worst for Talon, but also wasn't the best either. That was Aegis and the nine-second BKB timer. So you didn't get what you wanted to get done, I think, with this big item timing. Now, you still have plenty more time to go. After all, level 20 is closing in for Makoto. They would still have a lot of growth, but you did invest into going high ground, I think, during that time, during that window. Again, I, I think expectation, it was within the expectations. I think assuming you're going to get a fight or a Rax there is pretty hard because the high ground defense and spam for quest is solid. This go attempt I like a little bit more because you have the BKB on Batrider and you have that Glade nerf finish for Makoto with a double damage, so a lot more AoE, a lot more follow-up, and the initiation for Q is pretty much guaranteed with that BKB. 
this type of push is more reliable because your initiation is significantly stronger here. Especially if it doesn't go on a creep. You got a siege wagon. They're going to go for it. Got the lasso on a TA-2000, but he got picked up with grab ally. They got the vacuum. Three-man vacuum back into the wall. A great setup with Doom. Getting the puzzle on a jam and that damage straight into Talon. All he's slipping away. 23 still good to go with his BKB. No one he lays into the darks here. He's now dead. They're going to have to use more buybacks potentially. As the initiation was great for Quest, but again, the health and sustain allows Talon to push through anyway. And they just sit in the middle of all of that with no cares at all. Drum, pipe, Leipner is locking everybody down. Everybody's just healing. The Lifestealer has BKB and Rage, so you're not getting much magical damage through into 23 during that period. Of course, Infest can boost these heroes up as well, and now you're just ready to go again. Sure, you counteracted that last initiation with a grab ally. That is pretty obnoxious here, but now you don't have BKB on the primal. And now the silver eyes go. They don't need much mana. They can't heroes. do any damage to jabs, not with these illusions around. This is one of the issues in the matchup is the mana burn on the beast doesn't really matter since that drum is a passive. That's true. Still, Talon will respect Darkseer respawn. They get a tier three, they get everybody back from quest, and they got a lot of gold out of that exchange. More than last time, four or five K extracted here. Yeah, this is a much better go from them. And now you're pushing towards that Mjolnir onto the Lifestealer, which is going to be able to throw the charge on the Beastmaster, make him an even more annoying target to oh go on. Oh my god, you're right. I didn't think about that. Yeah, this is going to be obnoxious, because like I said, you can mana burn the Beast, but if he just has Mjolnir active on him plus the drum, does Jabs care? I don't think he does. You just put him up there. What's the answer for Quest? I would normally say it's the magic damage going to the beast between the Darkseer and the Primal, but you have BKBs, you have Pipe. You have a lot of sustain. It's not that easy. I like Talon's itemization in this game, and I feel like that is where they strike hardest, is when they're all on the same page about when they want to hit and what that hit looks like. And here it's just aligned pretty damn well. Yeah, it has. Shiva is soon to be picked up alongside that Paladin Sword that's giving the spell life seal. Ooh, Even Jabs more. is... Jabs is massive. He is a big boy. And just in time, too, for yeah, second Roshan. Yeah. Talon want to keep this momentum up. Quest trying to deter it by getting into his position first, but they're going to get caught. Didn't Mark maybe. defends himself. No BKB. You're right. The Batrider. Kyo may be paying for it. The Finger of Death finishes him off. They do get the Primal Roar onto the Primal Beast. And Amar's going to die from the Life Stealer's damage. Oh, he's going to be chased down by Noob. It's having a hard time being able to burst these heroes down. There goes the Infest. Again, the Sustain is just out of control. They quickly deal with the Tombstone and focus down the dead Zombie Man. <laughs> This is no long-term fight in the tank for Quest. Uh, this Phantom is not doing enough. Your Tombstone can never live versus the Shredder and the Inner Beast attack speed. Even with a botched initiation from Q where he has to buy back, doesn't get anything off, doesn't get BKB off. They still can't find anything else in that fight. Infest yeah. saves your other support, and then what are you doing here? You're just getting Radiance burned. These are... Jumps that Q is going to have to BKB early on because there is Blink Instant Hex from Lime. It does not get any faster than that. So you kind of have to play conservative here or you are going to get abused in the fact that their spell is just a little bit faster. Still, it's a great fight for Talon. Pretty much what you want, they get some sort of vision. You go in with the Bat Rider and it just frees up space for your cores to truck in together and form an invincible wall. As Quest do not have answers for the aura and the ball the Talon are proposing in this game one. You're gonna have to find it soon, because this Aegis push, this is one that can convert it into racks, and they did get that Shiva's eventually on the Beastmaster, so that's kind of the full circle in terms of items you're looking at to help deal with the Phantom Lancer in the fight. You're gonna have your Mjolnir, you're gonna have your Gleipnir, you're gonna have your Snapfire Talons coming soon, and now you have a Shiva's pipe, I guess the only thing that's missing is Crimson, right? Yeah, Jabs opted not to make the Vanguard go to Crimson for the, the greedier Shivas, but it's paid off. I mean, Shivas is a stronger item than the Crimson at this point in the game. For sure. Uh, especially just for him as well. The extra mana, not too bad either. Yeah, he's got a cheese uh, to be able to get him the mana when he needs it. He just delivered himself yeah, three mangoes, so mangoes. he knows. Mana's a bit of a problem for him. I mean, he doesn't need the mana in the fight. He just wants to be able to mango or heal up so he can get a roar off later yeah. on, right? But he's happy to sit there and just tank it up. And level 20 is online for Makoto here with the quiver, as you always get here. So that shredder burst is going to make some heroes disappear. Jab's taking the front line. Says, come at me, bro. He 
2000 does indeed come at him. One back for the Mage Slayer, by the way, trying to tank up on this Phantom Lancer with that plus an Elven Tunic, looking for any sort of HP he can get to last longer in this fight versus some of the magic AoE burn the Talon are just bringing out now. All of a sudden, that static charge going to work on jabs. That is a hard hero to just burst through, especially when you don't have any displacement on quest. If you had a Tiny Toss or a Lasso of your own, you could drag this Beastmaster deep. Maybe it looks more profitable in this type of situation. I don't know what you do to this guy, and your wall has been thrown out, by the way, that yielded nothing here. Yeah, absolutely nothing there. I think very likely just going to have to give up this lane. It's hard enough to fight. Without the wall seems madness. I mean, geez, just getting your life stealer illusion, and getting radiance for yourself. Now just pretty care. good. And they found the big oh, answer. Oh, 2000 gets caught. Could it be changed up with the cookie? Pulverize jump in, but immediately Primal Beast managed to get the roar off. Phantom Lancer's in deep, but just has to commit at this point in time. Oh, but the AoE damage is going to start raining in with the kisses. TA 2000 is going to be first one down. Nuke trying to stop the kisses, but cannot save his carry or himself. Another cookie. Put, put, put the Undying down. Three dead on the side of Quest. They do have buybacks, but Talon are just going to take everything from Quest right here, right now. I mean, they're missing some ults, but I don't think they care. They feed a cheese to 23 to get him back to full. And man, the itemization here paying off in spades as Talon just jam that timing straight into Quest base. Sure, you have a Phantom Lancer to defend your high ground. There's not going to be much high ground left by the time you can get in here. Look at Jabs putting himself on the front line. Malik desperately trying to catch some heroes here. Managed to get a two-man back in the two-man okay. from Makoto. Good kill. Now the full right on a life sealer who's trying to have health. Look at this but beast look at master. Jab, a static charge. A charge. This man is a one-man electronic dance festival. He's just jamming it straight to Quest, and they can't stop him. Meanwhile, 23 still has that second life. These two cores just seem to be unkillable. Lasso pull back, but once again, the Undying able to counter that with a grab ally. But what about Jabs? DA2000 just keeps on running into this brick wall. Can't stop him. Why? Why is he still trying to run into it? It's the bigger question. You gotta kite this hero out. He's back in on top. Finally, the Hex comes through. Can they bail him out? Infest. Oh, the commit, the infest. It's gonna give a little bit of heal, but it's not oh. quite enough. But it does put 23 to position to maybe finish off Malik. Go for more. Omar's a little bit low. Fortunately, a four staff gets him out. 23. Now gonna have to call it quit. There's no Hex. Exciting coming out from Quest. He might have been able to get 23 on that TP out. Still, the damage that this life stealer is outputting over the course of the fight is extreme. <laughs> like, how many times did TA2000 go, I'm going on the Beastmaster, guys? I mean, yeah, what did the comms look like? Hey, I'm focusing on Beastmaster, guys. Two minutes later, yo. <laughs> so, folks, see Beastmaster, <laughs> guys. <laughs> Beastmaster. Hey, little help here. Jab's just sitting there playing the drums. He's got the static charge on him. This is one of those fights where both teams know what's happening. It's just a question of can you get to the back line and finally quest find Makoto. That's the big opening that really eventually wins them this base defense, right? Because the Beastmaster is always going to sit there. I'm still surprised at how much TA2000 is trying to focus him. Because once you burn his mana, I feel like you just leave him. Yeah. Like, what's he doing, right? He's sitting there thinking about his life. If anything, I, I think you want to... To get away from him so he stops getting those drone yes. charges. If anything, right? you're like, powering beat him up. him with nothing to hit. Now, in this type of scenario, at the, towards the end of the fight, when Omar can hex him up and allow you to burst him down, okay, and then you start to go on him here. I guess it is a successful base defense for Quest as they hold on to a ranged Rax, lose three. Pretty decent Aegis period for Talon. They got a lot of net worth out of that, up to 20k now. It's going to be another set of items for them as. I guess if you're Quest, you're just trying to get to this Phantom Lancer late game. Stall it out. An Ags on Noob would help here with some break a little bit. Are scanning. Talon, they're not going to wait. They're going to instantly smoke up and run back across this side of the map. That allowed them to finish the Lincolns on 23 here, so... This life steer is very hard to initiate on, which means he can almost always guarantee bail out his other cores. Will not find anything here from Talon, however, as they wait for the next Roshan. And Quest do have some time before the ultra late game Talons come online here. So you should have another two fights at least before you're really worried about Snapfire just overwhelming you with the damage. If you can find Makoto first, that's your best case scenario. Or if you can land a counter initiation on the Batrider like you've been doing with either a Hex or a Grab Ally to counteract the Lasso. That is also a big component shutting down the displacement that Q normally should be able to offer here. 
he's not been able to find the drag back, so pretty much just putting jabs in front and hoping he's tanky enough. So far, he has indeed been tanky. Another thousand gold, and Quest might have the answer to it, though. They get that Aghanim Scepter, they get the break on the Beastmaster. Jabs is going to regret not going for a BKB. His drums is going to get countered. He'll still have the charges, but I don't think he'll get more charges when he's broken. No, if he leads with a roar, though. Yeah. You know, then you just immediately get the stacks. Bloodstone is a very interesting pickup for him. I mean, his spell lifesteal is not bad here. He just wants to be even tankier from a passive perspective when his mana gets burned. That plus Paladin Sword, you're up to almost, what, 40% spell lifesteal here? It's pretty crazy. Oh god, they're just trying to stall this out. They're like, new party up, man. He's like, I need another 500 gold, guys. He's going to come back, and I think he's going to sell. The thing is, you already have the drum stacks on him. All right, he sold his bottle, sold the wind lace. He's got the axe now. This break could matter. It could also not matter, depending on who gets their ult off first. Jump means everything right now. Kiss is going to zone to allow a boar to hit the racks. I don't know if this is the most efficient use of it here. G2000 Trying to be on the Delta Mims get the hangs onto the Beastmaster. Do they follow that? Got the real time for the lasso on the real G2000. The poop ride's going down to the Beastmaster. They're going to focus him down. Jack is dead. He goes down and now Noob. He starts putting on some serious AoE damage. There's still 23 to deal with. Good four step up to the high ground. Beautiful sub from Omar. 23 is left with oh, nothing talent. to hit while TA2000 is going to town. They're in trouble. They go chase after Makoto. They know they have to get out of here. BKB, Glimmer Cape, Silver Edge, all to disengage. And ultimately, Quest, they hold. But all they got was the Beastmaster. What do you mean all that? All they got? They got the Beastmaster. <laughs> they got the Beastmaster that's been a god in this game. It. Yeah. That is not an easy hero to bring down. And it is worth a lot of time here, right? That's what they win out of that fight. You only lose the Ranger Axe. You defeat the Aegis here for Talon, which means it's time for Phantom Lancer to farm up, continuing to push ahead. And I guess that break was enough here because you didn't get the stacks on jabs, right? The Hex prevents any sort of roar coming out to build it up. I mean, even then the break, did they really do anything? I think they just chain stunned him. Yeah, actually, it didn't even matter, right? He just never got the stacks built up in yeah. the first place. That is something jabs is going to have to think about as these fights go forward. You really need to start landing this roar Whew. before they initiate on you. It's a really big deal having this Radiant drum up Oscar. for the heal, especially with this sort of build with Shiva's Bloodstone. Like you said, no BKB, no A on disc. You might have just given the Roshan over, but at the same time, Talon might just take your Mecha Creeps. Oh, uh, no, they need to stun an objective, but it might be the wrong one. The Glyph is going to go out of TP back from Mal. I mean, you have to you hold be, this alone. You definitely come in here if you're Talon. This should be Megas for sure. Wall goes out. He can't stop it. That is going to be Megas and a TP away from Talon. Have the Aegis. Have the Refresher. Have the Cheese. Have everything you want. We're going to get a much bigger prize out of this one. Still going to fight a little bit as the, it is going to be Quest kind of delayed as they get back. Talon not able to get a pick off that they're hoping for, but still disengaging. Nobody lost. And that's just not worth it for Quest. I think if you ask Talon, would you take Megas to give up an Aegis? I think they'll say yes every time because basically they were getting that Aegis so they could commit for the Megas. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so now you have to wait out maybe a little bit, but I don't think Quest can do anything with this period because the wave shove is going to be deadly versus their lineup that has to take the fights in the five on five. I was More about to say that was a... for some growth. I mean, Malik can get his Aghanim Scepter. You can continue to grow here for Quest. This game just looks very difficult now that you're going to have to commit shells and Phantom Lancer Illusions to push out waves. In theory, Talon should eventually be able to find an opening with a Batrider jump, right? That's my issue right now. However, you did get that Aegis Cheese, and Aegis on the Phantom Lancer is pretty damn strong if Talon throw into you. And refresher shard for Malik. Yeah, double wall, double back, double Shiva's Greaves. That is a very strong single team fight there off that shard. Gonna be caught. Lasso with the life stealer. A no fire on him means noob. Can't even uh, jump away, even if he wanted to. The onslaught. Does that buyback? This might bait Talon into a very aggressive fight where you can clear them off with that Aegis and refresher shard. TA2000. The real one, they've done a great job before. Mostly Q with the lasso, time and time again, has found the real P, uh, PL. 
Oh, so you bump jabs, I might just like roar an illusion or something to get the stacks. <laughs> I don't know if I care about anything else. He gets silenced. He's gonna build him up here. Oh, it's gonna be put on top of the activates the blood tongue. Great back vacuum. One. Putting some heroes together. The stun is put onto the real PL with a buyback now from Noob. He's gonna pause it. Yeah. Oh, nice back with a wall with a beautiful combination followed up by Noob. And all of Talon Ooh. wiped out. Shutting my spear and I'm ready to go. They really underestimated the power that Quest is able to put out with that refresher and with the combo of the Primal Beast to follow it up. Man, they didn't get BKBs off. That back into the onslaught just ruined them. In two seconds, your heroes are gone. Snapfire, Lifestealer, you have spell immunity. Can't use it in the grave here. And all of a sudden, there is room for Quest to get something here. They get a double damage in the river. They're going to be able to go oh, high ground is... here. 60 seconds left on the Lifestealer. This is a chance. This is a way more of a chance than Quest deserved in this game. And you have to make the question from Talon. Why push into this Aegis? Yeah, when why? your lasso's on cooldown, right? You found that big pick on the Primal. He gets the buyback here. You have to be thinking about this buyback and getting out. You just can't get out in time off the TP Rage. You could also have just waited for another lasso and start a fight off the lasso where it's more reliable. 100% Q. He's desperately trying to kill the creep wave. What is but happening oh, right now? Creep is still going to be alive. He has buy, but that's a hundred second death. P2000, he still has a minute and a half on this Aegis. He has cheese in his backpack, and you're giving him a level 25 talent almost. Waves are being cut by the Primal as, sure, you have a Centaur hitting tier three, tier fours for Quest. I don't think it's threatening them too much as it goes down. And Moloch getting in top wave. Quest are gonna have really good map control. Can they do anything with it as Talon are respawning? Yeah, the weird thing is, is they had a tier one tower down at the bottom lane. It's not like Quest is going to be able to go straight for throw because you no. had Jabs who's going to be able to stand in front of them. Still, they got a melee rack. This is way more than I thought they'd get off this Aegis period, which I think was going to be 100% defensive. Talon throwing a little bit away. I should say a little. It was actually quite a bit of gold. They threw away their entire lead here. We're down to 3k game. I mean, one could argue that the gold here for Quest isn't as valuable considering they have to deal with lanes. Still, that is... Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. Concerning. It is concerning, Talon. <laughs> a little concerning Don't want to be choking this early on into the series. Again, I, I, I think it's so important. Just chill out. Let Jams get his BKB, man. Like, he has been a big factor against it's this PL. Just let him get a BKB so he's not bursted by magic damage as easily, that the break isn't as effective against him. Let him cook. Let him cook. And they still have other items that they can get. The Life Stealer isn't quite maxed out. It seems he, uh, I mean, he's still going to Moonshard, Nag, and Scepter, and swallow that one. But it also looks like he wants an Abyssal Blade, replace one of his current items. You have a refresher on Malik, by the way. Yeah. Like, that yeah. was a refresher shard, but he has an actual refresher now. So that double vacuum, double wall that really just crushed Talon in the last fight, it's going to be up every time now. And you have to think about these vacuums because you have an onslaught that you can pour through and you have an in earth spike that can go into it. Yeah, so if you get caught with multiple heroes, you might not get those BKBs off. Same as what happened last time. Even if you do, you're not guaranteed to get out the single target. Physical burst from the Phantom Lancer is significant now, and that is hard finish for TA2000. This Phantom Lancer, he is a tanky as hell now between the Heart, the Scotty, and the Mage Slayer pickup. He's almost level 25. The high ground defense is formidable now on the side of Quest as they got some big items to help them fight around these tier fours. They will find Omar with a lasso. Yeah, this, this is, is what is you want to do. That's going to be, I think, the hardest part for Quest here is they can, they've shown they can win the team fights, but they are going to be constantly under assault from these lasso picks. It's up again in 40 seconds, right? This is how I think you want to play the fights for Talon. You have Ninja Gear on the bat, you have BKB. Okay, there is a grab ally counterplay that can come out, but your lasso is lower cooldown than Tombstone. <laughs> and so, frankly, the, the Undying just can't be everywhere. Yes, the chances that Kiori can counteract every lasso every 50 seconds with a Tombstone is just not reliable enough. So that's how I would play this game if I'm Talon. I'm just telling Q, find every little pick and continue to do it until you have creeps push in, you get a big core pick off, maybe a hero without a buyback, and then you take the fight. No reason to give Quest a straight five on five here. Only here without buyback for Quest is that Primal Beast that was used earlier. Still three minutes left on the cooldown for Noob. 
So you also have to consider that if you're Talon, when you go for this final base thrown push, it's a five on nine, five on 10. You don't have a lot of heroes that can get back into that fight. It's only the Snapfire bots here. Another quick lasso play. They'll send some creeps in, maybe get some vision. Some uh, big boosts coming in soon. Level 25 Primal Beast, which is usually the pulverized duration. We have level 25 coming in for the PL, which I think you should be going critical strike. I mean, you, I think you got to just focus on your burst damage. This does feel like a critical strike game. That ends up being the more common talent anyway. It's level 25 for the life stealer soon. Good. Rage Duration or the Feast's Lifesteal. And then level 25, of course, for the Snapfire, which we've seen plenty of times at this point. Roll Shredder plus the Multi-Shot. Yeah, that Kodo's Talon is definitely probably the most influential in this game. However, that Primal Beast 25 is also pretty game winning. Like this extra pulverized duration. Yeah, hold the life stealer during its entire rage. It's nice this game. Amazing. It's really nice this game. Even just extra duration on the beast or the snap if you manage to catch them, right? And yep. especially since you have two of them with a refresher plus a time like relic for extra debuff duration. And they're backing together so the AOE oh damage God. from pulverized is also doing <laughs> some decent work. If you get caught in this mosh pit, I think you're gone. Like I, I don't think you're coming out of there alive. The survivability you had earlier in this game is not going to keep you alive anymore. And I kind of go back to this Bloodstone build on Jabs. Look, I, I like these Bloodstone spell lifesteal builds. I try them a lot. Yeah. A lot of times I also feel like they fall flat yeah. more often than they work outside of maybe Lashrak. And I think this item is not doing much for Jabs at this point. This is where you wish you'd had that BKB or even just something else like Refresher for Double Roar or... I don't know. Hex? Can't then you'd have like with the hex ever. You'd have a hex follow up after the lasso, right? That is something that has caused Talon some issues. Q's found a couple of good lassos on TA two thousand this game. You have to reward those. And the problem is he's dragging this lassoed Fanal Answer into what, right? There's like a cookie stun and then he just dobbles. Hex would have been pretty nice here. Nonetheless, they will claim some extra gold off of Roshan, as this is another Dire Side Roach for another Refresher Shard. So who wants this one? Is it Makoto for Double Shredder? Or Double Roar? It'll be Double Roar for Jabs, it looks like. Who has already had some mana problems, but double Bloodstone usage, double Shiva's BKB. The thing is, I don't think he wants to play these fights by just frontline anymore. Yeah. I think you're just so. dying. So I think this is more of, okay, you have BKB. So now you have double BKB, double Roar. This is where if you find the last one, a big core target, you pull them in, you roar them. Then you have a second round for either some buybacks or another big core that goes in. Maybe the primal when he goes in and wants to pulverize because noob assumes, oh, Roar was used, time to go in. Well, just kidding, I have another one. That might be something that can really turn these fights because you have to keep that spell in mind if you're new, right? When you go in, you want this super long duration pulverize off the level 25 talent. You want that to last the whole time. Talon have some interrupts here in the lasso, in the roar. You have to keep track of those. Make sure you come out on top. I do think Jabs can still frontline, but I, I think it does require the initiation. He primal roars, and then he pops BKB and just runs in. Right? And as long as he's got the magic immunity going and he already has the drum charges, I think he's still kind of good to frontline. I don't know, man. You just get, like, jump hexed all in. Dyer, I don't scary. know if you're living through that. Maybe Rage you get forced and glimmer. choice for the life stealer. Spooky. Yeah, I mean, can't blame him here. Spell immunity is pretty damn nice as we push into this ultra late game. 50 minutes on the clock. Position, as we've said, Talon are very familiar with. This will be another long game for them. Long game to start out the day, and they're looking for the lasso jump off a of smoke. Infest bomb. What is Q gonna find? Illusions. Smoke starts breaking. Radiant are scanning. Z quest <laughs> not pushing past those tier fours. We kind of see T2000 here. You just have to keep in mind where this Undyne is as well. Does he want the Phantom Lancer? That's another question. Also, it's E-Pass. Oh, oh, the Hermes on first. That's so a good one. What a beautiful vacuum. Now Delta, no, the Primal War comes in from Jazz. He refreshes. He's got a second one to go through. Who's he going to use it on? Looks like the Primal War a second time, but he gets put inside the Tombstone. Meanwhile, on the side, Bowser, who acts oh, on it, he the second wall vacuum in a tight little Corridor. And now the monster jumps in. It's a monster match. Noob jumps in, 
and cleaves through two. Oh, and he's working for this one. He's got an agent, and he's going to rely upon it. He needs it, a second light to work with. And Jabs is going to try and help him out here, but Jabs, his second BKB, may not be able to stand up to this physical damage. They go for the hex on to 23. Bring it's the right off. No fire. Omar's going to die. Turns around, pushes back TA2000, trying to get the focus, trying to get the light shield going. Oh, for the may be too strong. They've got the control. That's going to be enough for Life Sealer. Makoto comes back. Tier 4s are all gone. Jabs is fighting against all of these heroes with 23 and Ollie on the side. TA2000. It's a non-stop sustained battle that cannot seem to be won by Makoto. Makoto that's sustained. They seem to be oh, on him, but no! They lose the Primal Beast and TA2000 has to buy back as well. Talent. They're going to try and push through. See if they can get these time back down. TA2000 who's full health now. Malik fighting with the wall. Needs another vacuum. Needs to be able to stop. 23 Savage. A vacuum goes out, but 23. He finishes off the darts here. Two members left on the side of Quest. A throne that is low. Now making one member left. TA2000 against four. He cannot do it. There is not enough lances. Not enough illusions to be able to put a stop. The Talon who will take game one. Oh, TA2000 versus the world at the end.